Cobra Connyland is Switzerland's tallest, fastest, and best roller coaster. This shuttle coaster is a visually stunning ride with its beyond vertical spike, super circular loop, and unique scorpion tail inversion to switch directions. And who would build a ride this insane? It would be from none other than PAX. I had to make one heck of a detour to squeeze Cobra and Connyland into my itinerary, but it was well worth it. In this video, I will be reviewing Cobra and explaining why it's one of the craziest coasters in the world. Switzerland is home to two of the most prominent roller coaster manufacturers in the world in Intamin and Balger and Mabillard. However, the country doesn't have many notable amusement parks or roller coasters. Most of the roller coasters in Switzerland are either mountain coasters or kiddie coasters. But there is one notable exception in Cobra. Connyland opened in 1983 but they didn't install their first roller coaster until 2007. And they went big with Cobra. Instead of partnering with one of the aforementioned Swiss manufacturers, Connyland went with the Russian-based PAX. This was a more economical alternative, but it has caused the park several headaches. Cobra is what El Toro Ryan would call a problematic roller coaster. Cobra was supposed to open in 2007, but issues with PAX caused the coaster to be delayed three years until 2010. And in its debut year, Cobra was unpleasantly rough. It was so rough that Connyland took the seemingly unprecedented step of retracking their new steel coaster in fall after just one operating season. It was very similar to what we saw at Playland's Castaway Cove with Gale Force. When Cobra was retracked, the new track was not fabricated by PAX. Instead, it was made by Stagatra, the company who fabricates track for Intamin. This new track dramatically smoothed out the coaster. And then in 2020, the original PAX train was replaced by a new one from Sunkeed Hiji. Connyland may have gone with a different manufacturer given their issues with PAX, and also because PAX no longer manufactures roller coasters. Cobra was the company's second to last coaster. Connyland's Cobra was the first and only Loop 520 model ever built, but PAX had previously built a few similar Cobra 1 shuttle coasters. These rides had varying track styles. The original one that operates in Saudi Arabia Cobra Amusement Park has track that looks similar to an Arrow Looper. The newer ones built in Russia had track that looks similar to an RMC Raptors track. Connyland's Cobra had similar elements to the original Cobra coasters, but the track was more reminiscent of that of Intamin. And that's probably the reason Stakatra was contracted to replace it. There are three additional operational issues with Cobra you should be cognizant of. One, Cobra cannot operate in the rain. I suspect that may be related to the exposed brake on the scorpion tail element. Two, Cobra would not open with the park in 2021. On Cobra's page in the website, it was noted that the coaster would not open until the afternoon each day. I'm not sure if this will be continued going forwards or if it happened in past years as well. Three, Cobra had a lot of downtime, at least on my visit. I believe the ride operator doubled as a mechanic because he would go beneath the track every few trains for 5-10 to 10 minutes. I couldn't see if he was performing inspections or adjusting anything, but the frequency of these checks were pretty surprising. Maybe Cobra was just having a bad day, but I suspect this could be an ongoing issue and a maintenance intensive coaster given how it opened late every single day in 2021. Has anyone else run into reliability issues with this coaster? If so, you may want to be really careful if you go out to ride this ride because it would stink to get there and find it closed. While Cobra doesn't have the most vibrant colored track, I do like the overall appearance of this coaster. The snake themed trains look amazing, and this coaster's placement is perfect. Cobra has a linear layout. The captivating scorpion's tail element is positioned as you enter the parking lot, and the bunny hills over the midway add a lot of kinetic energy to the park. Then the freaky beyond vertical lift rises high above the station as you walk towards the attraction. And that station looks great too as it's temple themed. Now getting to your seat on Cobra is a bit interesting. There are two sets of stairs in front of the temple that lead into the station, one on the left and one on the right. There is no signage stating one staircase is different than the other, so guests would queue on both sides and merge at the station. Typically Cobra was just a one to two train wait, so the two staircases weren't much of an issue. But when the line did extend outside the station, the dual staircases caused some confusion. As mentioned earlier, Cobra has both forwards and backwards facing seats, and the train configuration is weird. 
The train seats 16 riders across 5 cars. The front car seats just 2 riders facing forwards. The 3 middle cars have seats facing each other like a Gerslauer spinning coaster, which allows you to ride either going forwards or backwards. And then the 5th car seats the final 2 riders facing forwards. And this back car is much closer to the car ahead of it because the coupler between the 4th and 5th car is oddly shorter than the others. In general, this train just looks very strange. And then the trains are fairly comfortable at least. Legroom is a bit tight if you ride in one of the middle three cars, but there's plenty of room in the front and back cars. As for restraints, Cobra uses vests. The restraint has a lap bar component that usually rests a few inches above my lap, and then there are these tight vests that have very little give. They weren't uncomfortable on my shoulders like some vest restraints, but they can impact how much airtime you feel during the ride's weaker moments. The ride's best moments can transcend the restraints, thankfully. My favorite seat was the very back, so I could get the longest initial drop, but I do strongly recommend trying the front as well, so you can ascend the furthest up the scorpion tail on the opposite end of the ride. I preferred to ride Cobra going forwards. This was because the visual ascending the spike and scorpion tail was much more terrifying in that position. Cobra begins with the most unnerving lift hill in the world. You depart backwards out of the station and engage the catch car. On most coasters, this is a smooth process. But on Cobra, your train will abruptly jerk forwards and backwards. It adds to the general uneasiness of the ride. And then you ascend that freaky beyond vertical lift. Until I got to the park, I didn't realize it was beyond vertical. I thought it was just vertical. And because of how this lift goes beyond vertical, it has a really weird lift mechanism. You have these two vertical cables that haul the catch car along the track. Cobra has a maximum height of 138 feet or 42 meters but the train does not ascend the entirety of the spike. Once the front has gotten to just beyond vertical, the train is suddenly released with no warning. And you really need to be in the back for the full effect of this drop. One, the beyond vertical orientation of the lift causes your body to helplessly lean forwards for the ascent. Two, the drop itself is considerably longer if you're back there. The back seats get a few seconds of floater airtime paired with fantastic free falling sensations. The seats towards the front only get these sensations for a brief moment. Cobra's drop felt like a more intense and more forceful version of the first drop on a Vacoma Giant Inverted Boomerang. And if you've been on one of those rides, you know those drops are amazing as is. So Cobra takes that drop to a whole new level. You then charge through the station, which is surprisingly shaky. I'm wondering if this one section may still be the original pack track based on how it rides. Cobra then glides over back to back bunny hills. I was optimistic these would provide some crazy airtime, like a lot of other PAX coasters, like Fantasiana's Wild Train for example. But alas, these two bunny hills offered very weak floater airtime. These are the two elements in the ride that struggle to overcome the tight vests. If you have a super tight vest, it can be tricky to even feel this airtime. But if you have a looser vest, the airtime, while weak in strength, is decently sustained. Then comes the circular vertical loop and this element is a powerhouse. It pulls some insane positive G's, and I grade out on every ride. It is one of the most forceful loops in the world, without a doubt, between its profiling and speed at which you take it. Keep in mind, you need to take this loop in reverse in the second half, so you have way more speed than needed going forwards through it. The pullout from this loop is not the smoothest though. It'll rattle the train in the back, but it'll really shake you up towards the front. Thankfully, the vest restraints prevent all head banging, and beyond the aforementioned station in this moment, Cobra does track fairly well. This loop is followed by Cobra's one-of-a-kind scorpion tail, which is an upside-down inclined spike. This is the one element in the ride that is better up front. The visual careening towards the end of the spike is one of the scariest of any coaster. It really does feel like you'll shoot off the edge, but there is a brake that slows you down, and you seem to owe your life to that brake. This element is one of the best in the world for hang time. It delivers several seconds of hang time for everyone, but even more so for the front because they ascend the entirety of that tail. Those up front get a ridiculous 5-6 to six straight seconds of hang time. You then complete the course in reverse, but due to the brake, you have less speed. Now this is not a problem for the loop, it is still very forceful. The front gets the positive G's in the valleys, along with some rattling though while the back gets their forces while pulled through the loop. 
However, the bunny hills on the return run do nothing. The train barely makes it over them. So unfortunately, Cobra ends with a whimper after an otherwise fast-paced and intense ride. So what would I rate Cobra? I would give this coaster an 8 out of 10. This is one of the best shuttle coasters out there, even if it is a bit rough around the edges. The two spikes are downright terrifying, the beyond vertical lift is a bizarre feeling, and the resultant drop is one of the best of any coaster. It feels more like the descent on a drop tower than a traditional coaster, and that's not a bad thing for me. Then the scorpion tail on the other end produces some of the best hang time of any coaster, if not the best hang time. And then you have a super forceful vertical loop you experience twice, once going forwards and once backwards. Really this coaster's only two weaknesses from a ride perspective are the bunny hills that are weaker than they appear, and the shaky track work at points. The other issue with this ride is the downtime that impacted how many times I was able to ride it, but hopefully that can be sorted out in the future, or maybe I just caught the ride in a bad day. So those are my thoughts on Cobra, the weird shuttle coaster Connie Land in Switzerland. Have you been on this coaster? What do you think of this PAX creation? I would love to hear what you think about this ride down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.